Yeah, I'm going to pull off the muffler on this McCullough um, Pro Max 610, and I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner with that awesome cleaner and a little bit of vinegar, mostly water, but some of that awesome cleaner from the dollar store. I've been finding out that the combination of that ultrasonic cleaner, the awesome cleaner from the dollar store, and some white vinegar really cleans the hell out of parts, man. I even cleaned another really dirty spark plug yesterday. The porcelain came out all white, all the way down to the bottom where it meets the metal. <laughs> it's amazing. This saw has a little problem with the oiler. I don't know if it's a big problem or a little problem, but we might be able to solve it. And uh, here's my boots. Boots a Confederate cat here. <laughs> you don't want your wet food, huh? You want this? Jeez, you don't want this one. He's <laughs> dry food. Well, maybe he does. It wasn't right in front of his nose. Anyway, so we'll see how this comes out. Uh, this was a little bit later model of the Pro Max 610, assembled in Mexico, but still USA parts. So, last of the Mohicans. Probably, this was probably made in the 90s. My other one's probably, I think, made in the late 70s. Around the time of my 78 El Camino was made. But, you know, people say it's no good, but. I'm gonna say it was good. It was good back then, so why wouldn't it be good today, right? They work pretty good. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not a pro or nothing, but just amateur screw around, mess around guy here. I'm gonna pull this cover off and take the um, muffler out and give it a good ultrasonic cleaning. See how it comes out. This one's easier to pull the cover off because the other one has a bolt coming up through here that goes on an arm you got to take that off and this saw you have to make sure the chain break is off or else they cover I think some saws aren't like that but that's how this saw is like if the chain breaks on grabs this clutch cover some saws aren't like that so that's how it because I think the chain break works differently on other saws and while this is off we're going to check the bar the oiler hole in the bar and the oiler See if it's jammed up see what's uh everything's working on this this saw does run fine though so you know it should be good to go well you have to take off the uh, allen screws for taking off that bottom plate which is that there's four screws one two three four and i cleaned it up you take off the muffler there's two um 10 millimeter bolts and be careful how you take these bolts off because they could be in there kind of hard. And if you put them back in, make sure you put anti-seize. This is the, um, the exhaust deflector because it comes out here. That's This screen sometimes gets clogged up. Piston looks good. It's nice and, nice and uh, not scuffed up or nothing. So this saw is a good saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, and um, I'm going to clean this off with some awesome cleaner first. Then I'm going to put it in the uh, uh, ultrasonic cleaner and get the thing really squeaky clean. Because the screen probably has is half clogged up. Even though it doesn't quite look it, it probably is. If I took it out, I'm not going to take it out. I'm just going to use the uh, um, ultrasonic cleaner. But I'm assuming that that screen is probably blocked up halfway. I bet you that muffler was never off. I don't think the saw has had much use, but this was never off. I actually pre-cleaned the muffler and the screen before I put it in this. And this is actually all overkill. The only reason I'm doing this is because I know I'm not going to be using this saw too much till I get up in Tennessee. Then I'm probably using the hell out of it. But I might as well get everything perfect. And uh, actually when I cleaned the screen off, you see the screen there? I just cleaned it off with a brush and uh, awesome cleaner. It's actually clean enough like that, but it's going to go to perfection. <laughs> And uh, let's see what else is wrong with you. See what's if I can figure out what's wrong with the oiler on this. It might be a, a clogged hole or some crap. I don't know. Well, I just determined that the oil line on this thing is snapped in half down there. It's, it's still attached to the body. I don't know if you could see that. Mm. Maybe not. You know, I got one of those damn cameras that you snake in there. <laughs> but it's the filters. What I was hoping was that the filter was just clogged. That's why I put some Marble Mystery Oil in it. 
you know, to unclog the filter. And I was, then I said, let me dump out the Marvel Mystery Oil and check it. And I said, well, no, it's actually, the hose is actually broken. So that probably pulled some dirt in, which could have maybe messed up this pump. But I might be able to fix this pump without pulling it apart, but using the ultrasonic cleaner again, which might lodge the check bulb, you know, free the check bulb up if that's, you know, if the pump is bad. But this whole saw has to come apart except for splitting the uh, crankcase <laughs> to get at this piece here. And you have to use um, a real good kind of RTV to seal it to the body here. And replace that hose but I'm gonna also take this off and see see if the pump works so this is gonna be a pretty good instructional video on this saw because I'm learning but uh, I'm not afraid of it because it's definitely not more complicated than a car or motorcycle so I figured there'd be something wrong with this saw they said they checked it out but you know it's not a it wasn't a person that sells that knows chainsaws they just checked to see if it started up but I want to point this out you can use what I would do is I do this on the little electric one all the time. Is <laughs> I don't use the manual oiler, and a lot of times I use that electric one, the 16 inch electric one, for stuff I shouldn't uh, that's too big for it. I just dunk the bar. I don't use the used motor oil to fill up the oiler, I just dunk the bar and use the motor oil. Cools it right down, oils the tip up real good, and you just make a cut. You just keep dunking a bar every cut there you go <laughs> it works now to take this uh, oiler handle thing off the plastic primer you, this is actually I pulled it off part way you take a screwdriver and just it's a clip you just pull that out of the way right and uh, this clip comes out lay it there that's all it is this part faces up that page part well I guess it don't matter which way it faces and this comes out. That's your oiler. Hmm. Amazing. Put that in there. And this pump can come out if we take the screws out. Take a look at this thing. Now this may be a long video, but <laughs> this, okay, these are the four bolt holes, right? This is, this hole goes to the oil tank. Now you don't want to use a lot of air to check this stuff. Um, this hole is the going down into the crankcase that operates the pump, the automatic oiler. Then this hole goes out to the oiler out here on the side that oils the chain. So you can use really, really, really low air. <laughs> Check the oiler going out to the side of the chain. And I'm using like maybe like two pounds or something. And you can check it going to in here, but I know the hose is already broken. And then this is going down into the crankcase. Now, similarly, on the bottom here, okay, here's your four bolt holes, right? And this one is going down. This hole right here would be that hole going down to the uh, chain, right? So it pumps in from here. That's from the inside, it goes in from crankcase, and this is the automatic oiler, and it goes out. What I should be able to do is put a little oil on top of this, and then operate it and see it squirt out of there if this is working. If it's not, it might not be working because the hose is cracked inside here, it was split, which means that pulled dirt inside this thing, which probably jammed up the check valve. But, I wonder if I could fix it with the ultrasonic cleaner. Boy, that would be kind of cool. I'm finding a lot of uses for this ultrasonic cleaner. Or maybe, I don't know, put some, run some awesome <laughs> purging through it or something. I don't know. Hey, I'd rather fix and repair and make it good like new than buy new, right? Now, the manual oiler on this thing definitely works, which means the automatic oiler should work. Um, but it did. This was the hole that's in... The inlet for the oil what I did was I took some PB blaster and I can't really hold this in the camera at the same time but I took some PB blaster filled up that hole put my finger over it and started operating the plunger with you know the rod this rod right here on the plunger 
on the plunger going in and out and then it had to prime enough PB blaster in there but then I just kept filling it up put my finger over the hole and finally finally some shot out over here which is the out outlet and like I said this hole this hole right yeah that hole right there in the middle is where the engine pumps for the automatic oiler that's the inlet hole that's the outlet hole so at least I de well if the manual oiler works the automatic oiler works the pump works so I'm not going to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner I'll probably just clean it off a little bit but that's a good idea because if you're trying to fix this check valve I heard if you take these apart you're not going to really get it to work um, fix the check valve in there if it gets stuck you're going to wind up replacing it I but I, don't, I never heard of anybody trying to run PB blaster through it I did try to run some oil through it that way uh, I couldn't get it to work I should have said that first I did try to put some lightweight oil in here and then prime it and I couldn't get it to squirt out over here uh, but PB blaster I tried it a few times and you know, you gotta, you gotta put, you gotta fill this up put your finger over this then pump this and then it gets down in here and you can tell when it's it's priming and then you keep you know you put a little more oil over it after the oil goes down in here put your finger over it and then you see some squirt out here so I know this is working I, I think the PB blaster actually is what fixed it Be but then I really what I have a problem with is the broken line that's in here and uh, I'm not sure how much crap I got to take off probably I know I'd have to take off this <laughs> the, re the starter thing I mean there's two bolts up here and two bolts on the bottom I mean maybe it's not that bad I mean you know it's it's not like you're taking off the heads of a freaking V8 motor or something you know so it ain't gonna be that bad okay so here's the muffler <laughs> it's pretty clean huh it's a show saw man powder coated yellow and all this other garbage well I'm kind of screwing around with this because I'm like I said I'm not really used, I want it fixed correctly and really good and ready for when I really need it and when you reinstall this okay 10 millimeter bolts right when you reinstall this you know um, put some anti-seize this is a big big thing of anti-seize because you're installing steel bolts into aluminum and <laughs> definitely don't want to have a problem taking those out in the future I was very careful the way I took these out to tell you the truth very careful well this recoil obviously I didn't think it would be hard to take off it's just four screws uh, Torx let me show you the inside of it see it's, it's sort of like the top of the, like, the way the lawnmower works right same thing in a way except a little different you see this is incorporated inside a, another thing and it's got these two as soon as it starts it gets the centrifugal force brings these out right and you got your air scooper in here to clean the motor I mean uh, that's your air cooled fittings and stuff so as soon as it starts these weights go out like that so you know if you ever have a put a new cord on here it's the same, I guess, like a lawnmower, basically. Of course, they dump the screws out. You'd have to take this screw out. And it's probably the same type of um, spring that's in a lawnmower, like the, the long, flat spring. Not that I'm explaining that very well, but <laughs> it's not that hard. So, that's good to know. <laughs> and uh, if you ever have to change the pull cord, the way I would do it is um, I would pull this cord all the way out and keep this locked in position open, then put the cord, the new cord on it, and let it pull, tighten up. That's how I would do it if you had to install a new cord. I would pull this all the way out. Then keep, then lock this in position. Then re put your new cord through here with the knot. This looks. I don't know if this is an original cord or not. It might be because this is this saw doesn't have much use in it. 
know what I mean? If you have to pull the new cord in here, just pull this all the way out. You know, just all the way out. And then when this is, you know, the spring is at full wound in tension, lock this in place. And before, you know, say the cord's getting frayed or something, and put your new cord through and put it through here and let it, when it's, you know, the spring goes back, it'll just wind itself. And, you know, and you put your handle on it and stuff, and you're done. That would be cool. So that's how I would change that cord before it breaks. Damn, I could see this would be a pain in the ass. This is a pain in the ass to fix because uh, now I did cover up my exhaust just to make sure I don't get any crap in here uh, and piston. But you got to take off just about everything except for you know the cylinder itself and um, splitting the crankcase uh, because I'm looking at this. These two bolts. This is your oiler, so you got to take this off. But then. The bar studs are attached to this, which means that's got to come off, which means then you got to take the clutch off. <laughs> God, man. I think that's good. Anyway. <laughs> and then, uh, this has got to come off, this cover. That doesn't look hard. The handle's got to come off. That doesn't look hard. But then I have to take the... It looks like I have to... And then up here on the top... Oh no, I'm unscrewing the lid, okay? I wonder why the people don't fix this shit. Man, it should be some kind of forceps to get in there. To, you got to take these two bolts off. Okay, that's easy. And then two bolts on the bottom. And taking this cover off isn't bad. And taking the handle off. But then don't I have to... I think I have to take the... The clutch out, which I'm pretty sure is a reverse threads, to get this thing off. And um, you have to lock up the cylinder, so you got to turn it clockwise to loosen this. It should be reverse threads. That's how they are because they tighten as you use it. This will have to, because this has to come out. So, we're going to have a pretty thorough video <laughs> on this damn thing, except for changing the piston or something. This looks like sealant or something. That's your oil tank right here. And, anyway. I'll be uh, to be continued, so I don't think it's going to be that hard, but it's time consuming. Holy smokes. It's like, let me see if I get my camera. It has the snake in here. You know, you could see that. I don't know if you could see that. The end of the hose, it's, it's broken right off there, man. See it? Two pieces, man. And that I think that did screw up the oiler for a while. You know, the pump itself. Hmm. Man. Well, here's your old oil line. <laughs> Definitely broke, man. Very brittle. Oh yeah, look at that. Split like nothing. Meh. So God, I wonder if there's a way you can press it on there somehow without Yeah, I don't think you can. <laughs> Too bad they didn't have like a little window you can add in here with a gasket and you can get in there and you know what I mean? It's stupid shit. I didn't manufacture this, so I would have had a window in here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. God, these guys. Anyway. <laughs>